Okay. Howdy. I am Steve Crandall. I'm the librarian at the International School of Kuala Lumpur. I've been a librarian. I did the math just a second ago, but I've got my notes here anyways. I've been a librarian for 23 years, and for that I was a history teacher, and even before that I was a journalism teacher, and even before that I was a journalist. And I mention all that stuff, especially the journalism part, because I feel the concept of being a journalist is very important to what I've become and what it means to be a librarian as well. Because as a journalist, I feel very strongly about the value of being able to ask questions, being able to recognize problems as well as opportunities, and being very, very assertive in trying to come up with solutions. And yeah, the uh, theme of what I'm going to talk with you about is supporting the inquiry process. But I believe in talking about the inquiry process, really all we're doing is talking about what we already know, talking about what we already do, and giving it a new name to it. So I'm going to go through a little bit about the dynamics of how that works. And this idea that, honestly, I'm not sharing anything particularly new to you, and reinforce by the fact that so many people have mentioned so many aspects of what I'm going to talk to you about in the next few minutes. Um, first of all, right from the start with David Potts from class when he came up and mentioned our desire to be able to work with inquiry-based learning. Now, I'm also going to give a little bit of props to Eleanor at the same time because I want to use my notes and we were so good at balancing three things. Let's see how well I do it. So, yeah, this is probably the most famous model of inquiry out there. You can start it wherever you want, but most people do start from that concept of wonder, and then go through, investigate, construct, express, reflect. And then there's the connection, so it makes a big circle, it makes a big movement around there. But the whole concept is, what questions do you have? What questions can you come up with? Where do you get answers? Once you've got some answers you like, how do you connect them to the next question? How do you connect them to the next task? How do you keep yourself in that kind of thinking mode? And again, we already know all this stuff. When a question like that pops up on the board, you guys have your answers. You know what works for you. I'm going to go back and have a first quiz. Model of inquiry. How many people know how to pronounce the name of that person there and feel really confident they can do it correctly? <laughs> Come on. My, my answer was no at the beginning of this presentation at the beginning of this workshop. I did not know how to pronounce her name. When I saw Barbara was her first name, I had no problem with that. But, what makes a great researcher? And again, it's amazing, it comes up before. It's not the information, just like Janine was talking about. It's the knowledge, it's the ability to find the answer. Where did I go to find the answer? For pronunciation of some famous person's name. Wikipedia isn't going to give me the sound. It could, if I called up. Is it going to get it correct? Yeah, you might. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I trust it. Anybody else? I went to YouTube. I went to YouTube and found out her name is Barbara Strickland. And I was guessing Strickland for the longest time when I started this presentation. I was going to call her Strickland and then I figured something about this No, so I better find out. And she's a former president of the ALA, and she has some videos where she introduces herself. And again, I think, given time, all of us could figure out how to do that. Now, those aren't the only people out there who might be considered great researchers. So I'm off the question a bit about what makes a great researcher, and we're looking more at quizzes so of those three guys right there. And what I think is really kind of fun is if you ask the students 
The guy on the left is about 99%. The guy on the right might be maybe about 50%, maybe not much more than that. <laughs> that guy in the middle, give it up. I mean, does anybody know the guy in the middle? There we go. We're librarians, we know that stuff. But having the information isn't the only thing that helps. You know, being able to go to somebody who knows. Anybody know the guy on the left? Yeah, it's Rick from Rick and Morty. Anybody know his full name? And the answer to being a great researcher, yes, is not you have to be a white male. I just happened to mention that because I was really impressed by that. I thought that was absolutely amazing. That's, that's no joke. I mean, Barbara Strickland's a great researcher. All of us here, in our own ways, can have a sense of we know what we're doing. We can call ourselves great researchers. Um, but I did happen to pick three. Uh, most people would think of as white guys, but Rick's family name does happen to be Sanchez. And I'm from a Latinx background, but maybe this is the most important. <laughs> At any rate, I was also asked what makes a great researcher by the uh, director of teaching and learning at our school. And he is now the superintendent director of our school. And he's a man named Ronnie Madani. And I went through a big long list of, I'm going to link this to our Esslers and our standards. But it all came back down to the same thing. You have valuable questions. You make sure the information is valuable, you get valuable answers. And then each one of those I was able to link to an Nestler and we could put lessons toward it and get all that work done. And it's not really that different from any other system. How many people recognize this system of research? Now, here's your, and no, no, no sound. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one, two, three, it is the, and you guys are going to yell out the answer for me. It is about one, two, three. It is the basics. Oh God, they're so high. They're so high. Can we try one more time? One, two, three. It is the basics. Of course, it's the basics. We're all old people. We have enough. We have to learn that kind of stuff, and it comes out the exact same way as Barbara Strickland. First, we're wondering. We're wondering what can we find out about? What do we want to find out? What do we need to find out about? We've got to find the task. Then we go from there to our investigative practice, then we use the stuff to create, and then we think about it afterward, and we think about it all the time through that. We always learn that the big six wasn't just those six in order. We can take it any way we want. And if wonder happens to lead to a sense of expression, and then we think about it at that point and go back to it, it's all good. Now, I did like this one, and I'm just throwing them up to show the number of similarities, but also the sense of emphasis here. I like that concept. I'm going to do this, Rob, and we're going to see if it works. Oh, yes, it does. I'm so happy about that. The clicker, the little uh, lasers on the other side. Narrowing the topic. I think that is such a huge aspect of what the inquiry model is all about that I'm actually going to talk about that a little more later. And then they just jumped in this one. The big six isn't going to do that. But so many times, I almost feel like these are the nagging ones that we have to keep asking students or keep reinforcing with students that these things need to happen on a regular basis. And other than that, though, it's all the same kind of concepts. And then the scientific method. And this is a scientist I really wanted to give a shout out to. Um, her name is Ma uh, Margaret Mungarela. She's from Uganda. She is a former president of the uh, World uh, Medical Association. But then when you look at the scientific method, first you're looking at things and you're coming up with questions and more questions. I do like that they add the concept of prediction into that. But then you use the stuff, you come up with your analysis, your evaluation, your report on all of it, and yeah, it's all the same. And then there's this last one that goes back to the joke. But I did want to get to this one. Anybody recognize that one? Just from what's right there? 
It's not exactly a design thing. I'll go ahead and show it. <laughs> that was trial and error. And trial and error, it just sounds so simple. You try things, you make mistakes, you try them again. But really, it's, just, it's exactly the same thing. You identify a problem and task, think about how to solve it, and you go through <coughs> all those steps. And yeah, sometimes those are the steps, guys. Especially for me. I mean, my wife is the one who finds my keys. It, it, I'm just very honest with that. I don't, I don't do those things. I don't find my wallet. You have to tell me where it is. Because that's sometimes the easiest way to get the answer. But when you look at the inquiry method and all it's about, it's not about giving up and saying, I'm done, and sorry, the first Google page I looked at didn't get me where I needed to go.